Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the way they got to that is if the whole market decided that yeah, um, most most this year to yeah. 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 Uh, for launching the report this morning, and over to you. Thank you. <laughs> Again, I, I suspect most of you here know who we are. Not for profit, philanthropically funded. Um, we're all ex financial market professionals, um, and I think that's one of the unique, unique things about Carbon Tracker. But being philanthropically funded means we can do the sort of analysis I don't think it would be easy to do at a Goldman Sachs or a JP Morgan. So we can really tell it as it is. Um, and our job is to empower investors with this analysis, engage companies, educate mainstream financial markets, and work with financial regulators to bring transparency. But this is all about getting us to that climate secure energy system and mapping out the transition. I think what's really interesting about today's report is, is we finally really get to look at this as as a whole. We get to look at the position of coal relative to oil, relative to gas, and really zero in on where the problems are, both from a climate perspective and from a financial risk perspective. And I, I think that's one of the most exciting things about this piece of analysis. And now we're saying, well, OK, where is the problem? We know we you know, over the next 20 to 30 years, probably need all of the fossil fuels here as part of that transition. So we shouldn't be focusing our efforts here. We need to be focusing our efforts here. So where is the carbon locked up in the coal, oil, and gas in at the top of the thermometer that we cannot burn? Now, whether you are an NGO, a funder, Prefer, you know, a climate or sustainability professional in the financial markets, all of our effort should be zeroed in on the fossil fuels above the 909 gigatons and understanding where that sits, i.e. which projects make neither financial nor climate sense. And I think that's a critical contribution from this report. Carbon Tracker has been fantastic on its communications, but one thing we have struggled with again and again, and clearly I think with some of the press coverage we're seeing already on this report we're struggling with, is the default assumption for many is, oh, well, this is only an issue if governments act. This is only an issue if there's a robust deal in Paris. I think any of you who've read our demand analysis and, and actually read our reports properly will understand this is no longer just about climate policy. Yes, that's an important factor. But actually, in many ways, it's the emergence of the technology that's now in the driving seat. And it, you know, beyond all expectations, as our Austin Transition Report and other analyses have shown, um, it's a perfect storm of factors, emerging clean technology. We are actually in the midst of a technological transition of the type that did for Kodak, of the type that did for Olivetti, of the type that did for Blockbuster, of the type that did for all the manufacturers of steam locomotives. And the thing that business history tells us is again and again, the incumbents never ever see these transitions coming, or they see them coming, but they don't react. They believe, like King Canute, they can sit there and stop the tide coming in. And I think as shareholders and investors, you, know, you have an opportunity to help them avoid making that mistake and help them, with the help of this analysis and an analysis of many other organisations, um, to avoid destroying huge amounts of value that could be far better spent. Thank you. So, to, to just explain, I guess, um, where our, our focus is in this report, there's obviously a, a lot of numbers used around, sort of big numbers around reserves and resources of oil and gas. Um, and then you have various carbon budgets that are used over different time frames, different probabilities of the outcome. Um, so what we've done here is, um, is just focus on this period between 2015 and 2035. So we've kind of taken um, that chunk out of the, uh, the overall 
um, sort of carbon budget that you could find if you looked at something like the, the IPCC reports. Um, and then we've taken the, the three IEA scenarios, uh, you can see at the bottom here, uh, and focused on the, the 451 to get uh, an allocation of that carbon budget between coal, oil, and gas. So um, that's essentially our sort of um, uh, benchmark, if you like, is the, the IEA 450. Uh, and here you can see um, that obviously coal gets squeezed quite a lot over the next 20 years. Oil uh, peaks around 2020. Uh, gas, there's sort of slight growth over the period. So that's the kind of context that we're looking at for, for the three fuels. Uh, and then we've got what we've kind of termed this, this danger zone above that, uh, which is, I guess, the gap between sort of industry business as usual uh, and achieving the, the IEA 450 pathway. Bringing them together again, you get a sense of the, the difference between the, the more capital intensive nature of oil and gas versus the more carbon intensive nature of, uh, of coal. Um, and also, I think, you know, it's a good chance for us to kind of reflect on all the things that have changed over the last uh, few years. Um, obviously, we've had the, the kind of drop in oil prices, um, the, the data suggesting peak thermal coal use in China, um, and you know, more recently, the, the changes in federal and provincial government in Canada, um, you know, really suggest that you know, if you haven't already started an oil sands project in Canada, then there isn't going to be room for, for any more emissions uh, up there. So, you know, all of these things are, are the same sort of direction of travel for us in terms of uh, moving away from uh, fossil fuel growth, basically. The discussion, I guess, you know, as, as Mark emphasised, you know, this is, you know, thinking about a kind of two degree stress test. Uh, it doesn't mean that has to be you know, the ultimate outcome, you can think about one and a half degrees or two and a half degrees, depending on what you, you want to apply. But I think for us, it's certainly a relevant benchmark uh, at this point to think about at least understanding uh, how far you go beyond that.